Many of us have had to get used to communicating in new ways over the last couple of years, haven't we? Some of you will have met up with friends or family using online video calls. You may even have had a video appointment with a doctor during the pandemic. For people with an interest in healthcare, these new ways of communicating have opened up exciting possibilities. My name is Dr Richard Perry and I am a consultant neurologist at UCL Hospitals. For me, the benefits of close communication between doctors from across the UK are illustrated by two recent projects, both of which started here at UCL during the COVID-19 pandemic. The first is the story of VIT, a very rare side effect of vaccination against COVID. This is a condition in which abnormal blood clots can cause blockage of veins in the brain, often causing a stroke. When we first heard about these rare cases, an email discussion started among stroke doctors in the UK. Within a couple of weeks, we had started a national study to explore this further. Through rapid digital communication, we were able to learn a good deal about this new condition and how to treat it within just a few weeks, much more quickly than we would normally expect. Now that this study has been published in The Lancet, doctors from all over the world can learn about this illness and how to treat it. Another similar example is how increased digital communication helped to bring together a group of doctors interested in COVID and stroke. Even though we were based in stroke centres spread out across the UK, we were able to meet online to discuss the idea of studying the impact of COVID on stroke. Within a few weeks, we had a study up and running which led to a publication in the Journal of Neurology, Neurosurgery and Psychiatry in November last year, again allowing us to share findings with other clinicians helping stroke patients across the world. My name is Georgina Carr and I'm Chief Executive of the Neurological Alliance, a membership organisation for any organisation committed to improving neurological care across the country. Our patient experience survey, which had more than 10,000 respondents back in 2019, highlighted just how important it is to give people affected by neurological conditions a strong voice in the development and provision of care services and for those experiences to be listened to. This was one of the primary reasons why, together with the Brain and Spine Foundation, we designed and developed a new digital platform that regularly captures and reports patient experience data. We analyse these experiences every two months and present this evidence to policymakers, clinicians and commissioners who are ready to listen and to act on what they hear. Neurolife Now, which was launched in January of this year, is a unique programme that captures real stories from the real world in real time. Just last month, eight stroke survivors shared their experiences. They shared much in common with other people living with a neurological condition during the COVID pandemic, reporting significant impacts on their mental health and disruptions to their care. We've already shared this evidence with the NHS England and Improvement Transformation Team and the former Minister for Mental Health, Nadine Doris. We hope that it'll ensure work on the forthcoming mental health action plan and elective care recovery more broadly will take these experiences into account. The appetite for this evidence, even at a ministerial level, shows just how valuable it is and can support improved public policy. My name is Mark Smith, CEO of the Brain and Spine Foundation. We're the organisation who have designed and developed the NeuroLife Now programme in collaboration with the Neurological Alliance. You've just heard from Georgina Carr why there was a need to develop a digital engagement platform to capture the real world stories of people living with a neurological condition in the UK. The great news is that people from our community have responded very positively to the initiative and have been very supportive of the programme. We have a community of over 800 users so far and produced six survey reports. Although only in its pilot stage, NeuroLife now has been created with people in mind. We work with people with lived experience to design the early prototype of the app, the website, the brand look and feel, and the communications related to the programme. Very much at the heart of the programme is the principle of co-design, and we continue to involve our community as the iterative developments of the technology and the user experience is progressed. We are of course very aware of the limitations of digital technology, 
and mindful of digital exclusion in some parts of our community. So that's why we're enhancing the programme to make sure that we're capturing all the voices of people affected by neurological conditions. My name is Rob Sinister. I'm a consultant in stroke and neurology. I run the Stroke Service at UCLH and the North Central London Integrated Rehabilitation Project. Stroke assessment can be difficult before hospital admission and before brain imaging is performed. This can lead to pre-hospital screening errors so that patients may be brought to the wrong hospital for immediate care. And this can make specialist stroke services less efficient for time critical treatment. In 2020, we worked with the London Ambulance Service to routinely use digital technology to improve the process of pre-hospital selection of possible stroke patients. We created a formalised, video-enabled, shared stroke and ambulance crew assessment that is activated if the crew think that they are assessing a new stroke presentation. We rolled this out in North Central London over a three-month period of training and testing with our ambulance colleagues. We have now performed more than 2,000 assessments and found that the system reduces by more than 50% the number of non-stroke cases taken long distances to a stroke hospital. It reduces treatment times for time-critical interventions such as thrombolysis and thrombectomy in complex cases. And finally, reduces the time to treatment for high-risk resolving events known as TIA, which have a high risk of recurrence from days to a small number of hours. Independent review has shown that the system is popular with ambulance crews and hospital teams. The system benefits stroke survivors and people without stroke in ensuring that the ambulance crews go to the right hospital first time. And for stroke survivors, clearly allows time and critical treatment to be delivered faster, leading to hopefully less long-term disability. We are now setting up a similar resource for calls to NHS 111 first. My name is Peter Snow and I'm a research fellow at UCL within WISE and Aspire Create Centres working on upper limb rehabilitation, robotics and virtual reality. I initially focused on those suffering from phantom limb pain but I'm now expanding the system which was created as part of my PhD to examine its effectiveness towards those suffering from other upper limb pain and neuropathic pain. The system we're using is based on our group's seminal work for stroke rehabilitation, which involved the first randomized controlled trial in Europe to evaluate the therapy using robotics in people who have experienced chronic strokes. Due to its success, I've been translating elements to other upper limb conditions. The UCL Aspire Centre for Rehabilitation, Engineering and Assistive Technology, which is led by Professor Rui Loreiro, is an exciting joint research venture between the Aspire Charity, University College London and the Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital in Stanmore. The centre mission is to develop translational research to improve the quality of life of people with spinal cord injuries. We investigate techniques which are applicable and transferable between different conditions, including stroke. We know that many stroke patients are experiencing difficulties with upper limb movement and through our work so far we feel that using robotics could have an exciting opportunities for upper limb rehabilitation for stroke survivors. We blend assistive technology with advanced rehabilitation devices to actively promote and support the restoration of function. Instead of considering each intervention in isolation, we envisage an integrated systems-based approach combining cutting-edge evidence-based medicine with state-of-the-art rehabilitation engineering solutions. We're excited to see how these cutting-edge technologies could help people, including stroke patients, in the future. We have seen how even simple forms of electronic communication allow rapid sharing of experience between doctors during the pandemic. Patients can also come together in new ways, sharing their stories and helping health professionals to deliver services better suited to their needs. Meanwhile, more advanced technologies, particularly in robotics and virtual reality, have the potential to transform the way in which rehabilitation is delivered. 
It's easy to be fearful of new technologies, but we have seen a glimpse today of how they can empower doctors, scientists and patients to work together towards a brighter future. Thanks for watching.